is up guys and welcome back to the S2000 build series. We are at none other than Art of Attack doing some maintenance and some work to the S2000 because tomorrow is track day so today we are preparing the S2000 for the track and we're doing a couple of small mods such as the front sway bar to help prevent oversteer and just you know keep the overall body roll of the car down a little bit. This will make it feel really nice driving on the track as well as uh, we are replacing the front and rear ball joints to be able to adjust the camber on the car because I am putting on the new wheels and tires today and we're gonna have to adjust camber because we've got some meat and the specs on the s2000 really aren't that aggressive and i went kind of aggressive on it just because we need some good sticky tires that's what we're gonna be doing today we're also doing a couple of maintenance things such as we do have coolant oil we're gonna be doing brake fluid as well as spark plugs just to make sure the car is overall ready to go and we're gonna have no issues on the track tomorrow so we are gonna go ahead and get started we are gonna start with the front roll bar and knock that one out first. Once again, we have Ken over here helping me out with everything today. We are gonna go ahead and start loosening up everything for our sway bar up here. Everything is, uh, we've already started a little bit and it's pretty loose as is. So now we just have to go ahead and take everything out. Oh, this thing is already starting to come out. Take out all of the nuts right here and the bolts and this thing is just gonna slide right out and we can replace it with the Eibach front sway bar. Before we actually go get into installing the front sway bar, I wanna show you guys the ball joints here. We do have the rear ball joints right here and then here are the fronts and and Ken actually has a really good explanation of kind of how this changes the whole car. So do you want to do the- Yeah, the so rear? for the rear, it's, uh, well, it's a row center. They call it adjustment, but I mean, obviously you can't adjust it, but what it is is the, so once you lower the car, your ball joint sits lower, your standard ball joint sits lower. This one is just raise, up, raise, raise your knuckle back up. So you can, you can tell this part is a little bit higher than the normal, it actually sits here, sits like this. So. Basically, it pushes the knuckle down more mm -hmm. in order to have like the factory. Oh, uh, factory settings. So yeah, factory of... geometry. Right. And then same as this one. This one is longer, and then also you can adjust your camber adjustment from the. Oh, it sits like this. So camber is like this. You can move it, move this Whoa. plate around. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean standard S2000 already have it, but I think they max out at three degree if I remember correctly um, or two and a half something like that so you just got more adjustments on it and then later on if we get the upper ball joint we can actually widen out the track more mm. so the front can be a little bit wider so you have more well mechanical grip yes so with experience comes more of that but I think this is gonna be perfect yeah. for our first track <laughs> Okay, front sway bar is out. Let's take a look at the Eibach front sway bar, sway bar and see the difference from this one. All right, so here is the Eibach front sway bar. Now, I'm not sure of like the weight diameter or anything uh, difference in the Eibach versus stock, but there's definitely a noticeable weight and thickness difference from the Eibach and the stock. Now we're just gonna work on putting on the new bushings and the new sway bar on, and then that portion of the car we finish up for today. Let's actually take a measurement here to see the difference between the Eibach and the stock. Okay, let's do this. 28 millimeter. 28, okay. And I'm guessing this one is a 32. Yeah. Yes. 31 and a half, so. Yeah, you know. right under 32. So we yeah. have a 28 from the stock and almost a 32, so 31 and a half yeah. on the eyeball. Definitely a big difference. So actually, while we're already up here, we're gonna go ahead and do the front ball joints as well as the front sway bar. So we went ahead and took out the two bolts that connect the ball joint to the rotor up here. Now I'm just gonna push the rotor up. I think that we can actually just hammer this thing out. That was a pain in the butt. Driver side was definitely a lot easier than the passenger side, but both front ball joints are out. We can actually install the new Buddy Club ones. Before we go ahead and install the new Buddy Club ball joints, I wanted to show you what OEM looks like versus the Buddy Club. Wow, that is crazy. 
but these are absolutely sick and we're gonna get a lot of adjustment from these, which I don't know if we'll really need all of this adjustment. We I'm thinking about negative three um, is what I've read and what I've heard is best for these cars. So that's probably what we're gonna try and stay at. But if we need to go any further, we definitely have tons of adjustment with these buddy club ball joints. All right, Ken, what's your little track secret so here? So what, do what I'm doing right now is I'm putting this little heat wrap piece on the rubber um, ball joint cup, a boot right here. Um, because later on when we do beep, uh, brick brick kit, we will be taking out the, the brick shield in the back. So this is just preventing this thing get melt because after we take it off, um, it's gonna be rotor and the rubber. And the reason we're doing that is taking out the brick shield, we can actually get more um, more we'll airflow. Get, yeah, more airflow out of the rotors. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what he means is today we're gonna be taking off the shield right here. On the track, you're gonna wanna take this off because it does create more heat uh, with your brake order right here. And so since there's not gonna be the shield, the rubber on the ball joint is gonna tend to uh, melt or get stuck, something like that. So we're putting the heat shield around that because this is no longer gonna be here. Front ball joints are installed. We can actually go ahead and start with the IBOC front sway bar, and then we can move to the rear ball joints and then start all the maintenance stuff. So we're getting things knocked out today. Hang out with me too much, man. I know. <laughs> yeah. They have two different settings. If you yeah. want a little bit of more stiffness, you know they have a they have the A bolt. But if you want all the way stiff from the IBOC. You have the B bolt right here, which is what we're gonna be using, which is, uh, that's like the highest setting for reducing oversteer. So that's what we're gonna be using for today. So for those of you who may not know, or actually a lot of you probably do know if you're an S2000 guy, I have the AP1 chassis. The AP1 chassis is actually more prone to snap oversteer. Now, since this is my first time ever being on the track, I wanna prevent oversteer as much as possible until I can actually learn to control my driving, learn what I'm doing on the track, learn the angles, stuff like that. Uh, I wanna prevent that as much as possible for my first time. So that's why we want the stiffest setting and to prevent uh, oversteer as much as we yeah, possibly more can. More comfortable at the track? Yeah, yeah, because I, I I don't know what I'm doing. I, yeah. Once I'm comfortable on the track, we can actually loosen things up and I can kind of get my, my driving style down. But since I'm gonna be instructed tomorrow, this is my first time, the least amount of oversteer possible. Cause I don't, I don't wanna be spinning out all day. So we're gonna have some fun. Moving forward with the car, we did the front sway bar, we did both the front ball joints. Now we're moving on to the rear ball joints and then we can start doing all of just like the fluids and stuff to get this thing track ready to go. I'm excited. Here are the rear ball joints right here. We're just gonna go ahead and loosen these up and take them out. Okay, now in order to take off the rear ball joint, we're actually be taking off the rotor here to kind of access the ball joint a little bit better or hammering it out because this is really difficult to get. But once that's done, we'll be good to go. And since we're working with the brakes, we're also gonna do something else a little bit special. But now we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the rear ball joints. After a solid hour or so of hammering, where's the stock one at? Uh, right here. Hammering the stock ball joint out. Still we hot. even lit it on, oh yeah, it is hot. We yeah. lit it on fire and everything. It was such a pain. We finally got it out and we are putting the buddy club ball joint in Just now. Kind of hammer it in too. Yeah. Light hammer it. Definitely not a fun job, but we're getting close. Okay, and almost there. Almost there. Yeah, very, very close. There you go. There it is. Oh, it's in? 
Okay. Hold on, so you need to push it forward a little bit. Hold yeah, on. Now it's in. Okay, now it's in? Yep, it's in. Okay. All right, a solid like three or four hours later, we finally have everything in that we need to get in today. We have both ball joints up front, both rear ball joints as well, and the Eibach front sway bar. Now we're going ahead and changing all the fluids. Ken just got out the stock oil filter, as you can see right there, and we're gonna be replacing the oil, the trans fluid, the brake fluid. Are we doing diff fluid today too, Ken? Yes. We're literally doing everything. We're yeah. making sure that this car is in perfect shape for the first track day. So let's go ahead and finish all of that up and think part one of our track day preparation will be done. Last but not least for part one of our track day prep, we're gonna go ahead and swap out the spark plugs. We just got finished with changing the oil. We did it with the, uh, the clutch fluid, the trans fluid, and the diff fluid. So everything has been changed out now. Uh, last but not least, like I said, we are doing the spark plugs and the car should be completely 110% ready to go. How are we looking over here, Ken? We're good. And we don't have the spark plug socket. So this is what we're gonna use. Is once we lose it, we stick the coal back back in. Nice. So we get the spark plug. Oh, nice. Out. Yep. How they look? Looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Spark plugs are in. A little change of plans here. We are not ending here. We are actually going to put the wheels on. I'm very excited because we're about to drop this thing, take it to the alignment shop, put the wheels on, get in alignment, and then this thing will be set and ready to go. I forgot to tell you guys that I actually got wheels and tires. I don't know how I forgot that, but we're about to go put those on. We're just buttoning up all of the bolts, all of the wheels and stuff, and getting ready to get this thing to the alignment shop. We are cutting it close. It is currently uh, 7 p.m. I have to wake up at like 2.30 in the morning to be here, 5 a.m. so we can make it to the track. So this is definitely like a last minute track prep, but it's fun. This is what the fun's about. So we're gonna go ahead and finish everything up and go to the alignment shop. All right, oh, last part, well, actually not the last part, but we are getting close to the final, the final parts of the track prep. We just made it to Rocket Garage, which is where I got my, focus this, which is where I got my wheels and tires mounted. Now we're actually doing some fender rolling to actually make these things fit, because as you guys know, S2000s don't have the best fitment. So we're gonna be doing some fender rolling and getting an alignment specified for the track, putting some Amber, um, all the adjustability that we got from the, uh, the ball joints that we installed today. So this thing is about to be completely ready and set up for the track. So let's go ahead and knock everything out. So with the fender here, we're actually not even gonna roll this rear. They are gonna go ahead and shave off all of this and then we have to relocate the bumper tab right here because of how thick these tires actually are. So that is the plan of attack for the rears and then obviously we're gonna have to roll the fronts and i went and took out all of the fender liner because we're not going to use that anyways it was just in the way floppy um because the previous owner whoever had this must have had a slammed car and they just rubbed through the top so it was useless anyways all right big reveal we got the ze40s on along with a full alignment the rear's a little bit sketchy because our toe arms are bent a little bit so we have a little bit more to win in the rear than we would like, but being my first track day, I don't know how hard I'm actually able to go either way. So I don't think the toe in will make a difference. I really don't know better anyways. But these are, the, this is the new setup that we're gonna run. And now we have the spoon front brakes to install and that'll be it. Okay, to finish out our night, we do have stock, stop tech steel braided lines for the front and rear of the car. We actually decided to check the brakes today and the front brake pad is actually split into two and the caliper was seized. So I decided to make an upgrade and we got the spoon four pot brake calipers, which are gonna look absolutely amazing and just add to the whole entire like spoon build that I wanna do. So go ahead and check these out. And these popping behind the bronze ZE40s is gonna look absolutely amazing. So let's check these out. 
spoon everything. Dude, these are so dope. Oh my God. Look at the color. Oh. Then we have the spoon logo right here. This is gonna look beyond amazing and this is gonna make the car feel so good on the track tomorrow. It is currently 11.38 and I have to be up at 2.30 so we're just gonna power through this and uh, take you guys along for the ride. What's up, Ken? So this is like, a, it's a, the piston is like stagger, right? Right. So you always want the smaller piston when, the, when it rotates, you want the, the small piston to go f touch first. Right. Yeah, so I'm just making sure. Okay, earlier. this is gonna be a sick setup. Oh, oh, by the way, we also have the spoon rotor or the spoon brake pads as well. So we went full spoon everything. Now they only had the front brake pads, so we actually got OEM rear brake pads. And when spoon gets some more in, we'll upgrade the rears too. But I just thought I'd show you guys that. Spoon brake pads, front spoon calipers. What do we got going on here, Ken? So this is all hardware, and this is the bracket for the uh, bricks to the knuckles. And they're making made by steel, so it's pretty strong. So these and are super nice. Dude. Yeah, new hardware, everything, so we don't have to use the old hardware anymore. I like their packing. Yeah, all spoon yeah. everything, bro. Yeah. So Japan this is uh, next project. Yeah. Japanese know how to pack. <laughs> Okay, so easy enough. I went ahead and got the stock caliper off. As you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and install the new spoon four pot caliper. Uh, it's pretty easy actually, so we're just gonna stick this back here. And these model blocks actually make it really easy to put in your brake pads. Just go ahead and take this bracket off right here and slide in your brake pads. Ooh. And both calipers, Ken went ahead and did the driver's side, I did the passenger side. Both are on along with both of the pads. This is gonna look so good with the bronze E40s. Now the unfun part starts and we have to actually do the steel braided lines and bleed the brakes and then our night is completely done. What time is it? How long? That was a pretty quick install. It's 12.10 now, I think we started at 12.45. Quickest install of the day. Now we just have to do all the unfun stuff. It is 1.37 in the morning. I just made it back home from Art of Attack. We finished up the S2000 and I really didn't film any of it. Uh, we really just needed to get the car done because I have to be up at 2.30 in the morning to meet them to go to drive out to Chuckwalla, which is like three and a half hours for me. So yeah, today was an extremely long day, way longer than I planned. I will show you guys the car in the morning because it looks phenomenal with the ZE40s and the spoon brakes. It's just like the car is going to be amazing on the track and I'm so excited, but I need to get some sleep. I need to get at least a little power 30 in or something because I'm going to be dead on the drive up to the track. So I will see you guys in the morning, bright and early, 2.30 a.m. Let's get it. All right, 5.14 in the morning. The S2K is officially done. We have Pat from Art of Attack loading his Integra out there on the trailer. Uh, the S2K will be next, but oh my God. I think I'm at the point where I'm so exhausted that I'm not tired, but I'm like really tired, you know, if you know what I mean. But the car came out phenomenal. You can see the spoon brake behind the ZE40s. We have the steel braided lines back there. Like this car is now like 110% track ready. I am so stoked to drive this thing. Oh my God.
Okay, so this is how the car sits. Hope you guys enjoyed the full track prep video. This thing, <sighs> this thing was definitely a pain and there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys didn't get to see, but we had to get it finished up. Now, early in the morning, time to load this thing up and go to the track, so I'll see you guys in the track day video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.